Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson on sequences. Today we are going to be looking at investigating quadratic patterns. But before we get into that, I'm going to ask you a few questions just to get those brain juices flowing. So, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever thought about patterns that occur in real life? Or if patterns can link to certain situations? Or could I even use patterns to explain something happening at the Olympics? Well, you're going to have to stay with me during this lesson to see what that is. So let's have a look at today's concept map. Firstly, I'm going to do a bit of revision on concepts that are relevant to sequences, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Then I'm going to revise the definition of a linear pattern where the first differences are equal, then I'm going to introduce the concept of a quadratic pattern. And in a quadratic pattern, the second differences are equal. But first, let's have a look at some general definitions. Will you follow on the board with me, please? So the first one that we are going to look at today and revise is a term number. And that refers to the position of the term in the sequence. Tn is the nth term of the pattern, where n is the term number. So if I say T1, and we can see here that 1 is in the nth position, that means that it's the first term of the pattern. So T1 is the first term of the pattern. And if I say T3, that means that it is the third term of the pattern. So we can see T1 had n is equal to 1, and T3 had n is equal to 3. Hopefully everyone's with me so far. So if I said T63, that would be the 63rd term of the pattern. Let's have a look at our next definition. We are now going to talk about term value, and that refers to the actual value of the term. So if I say Tn is equal to the actual value of the term, we're going to actually have a number present here. Okay, sorry, that U looks a bit like an N. Let's make it into a U, everybody. So we're going to actually have a number there. T7 is equal to 334, tells us that the value of the seventh term is 334. So just the statement alone that T7 is equal to 334, the 7 is the term number, and the 334 is the term value. Great, so let's just think about some other hypothetical examples. If I say T10 is equal to 700, that means that the 10th term has a value of 700. Great. Hopefully everybody's with me so far. Let's have a look at our next slide. So the next thing that I'm going to revise with you is that of a common difference. The common or constant difference, and we denote it with a D, so if you see a D in patterns, we're talking about a common difference. So the common difference is the difference between any two consecutive terms in a linear sequence. So please, please remember that a linear sequence has the property of a common difference. Wonderful. So, if you're sitting at home thinking, well, is there an example of this? Let's just say if I had a pattern going 3, 6, 9, 12, I'm sure you'll all agree with me that each time I am adding 3. So that means that my common difference is 3. Wonderful. Let's look at the next slide. 
So another general concept or the next definition is general term. And the general term is a mathematical expression that describes the sequence and that can generate any term in the sequence by substituting in different values for n. So if I break that down into other words, it essentially means that we can write a mathematical rule for our pattern using Tn and n that can help me describe the whole pattern and how it works. But don't worry, we're going to do more examples later to actually illustrate this concept. Great, let's look at the next slide. So, when we are going to define a way that we can calculate common difference, we've already discussed that a common difference is one of the main characteristics of a linear sequence. There is a way that I can actually calculate that. So, the common difference is equal to T2, so that's term 2, minus term 1. But I could also write it as T3 minus T2. But also, if I simplify it, I could say it's equal to Tn minus Tn minus 1. So, if we think about the pattern that I gave you earlier, which was 3, 6, 9, 12, I can see that I could find the common difference by taking the term, or let's say we're taking T2 over here, which is 6, and subtracting 3, which will equal 3. If I take three term 3, which is 9, and I subtract term 2, which is 6, I again get 3. So hopefully everyone will agree with me that the common difference can be found by taking a term value and subtracting the term value that comes before that. So I'm just going to circle that definition for us again. We take the term value and we subtract the term value that comes before it. That is the common difference of a linear sequence. Okay, we are going to go shortly to an ad break, but as soon as we're back, I'm gonna do an example of a linear pattern, and after that, I'm going to define a second difference. This is an example of a first difference behind me, but we'll talk more about that shortly after the break. See you soon. Welcome back everyone. Just before the break, we defined common difference. Now I'm going to take that definition and the fact that it's a property of a linear pattern and we're going to first look at an example before defining what a quadratic pattern is. So first, let's have a look at our linear pattern example. Will you please follow on the board with me? So the question says, determine the common difference and the general term for the following sequence. So I'm gonna to go to the next slide so we can see it a bit more clearly. We can see that we've got term one, term two, term three, term four. And if I am first trying to look for my common difference, let's have a look. We're gonna look at our terms going from term one to term two, term 2 to term 3, and term 3 to term 4. From term 1, which has a value of 10, going to term 2, which has a value of 6, we can see that we subtracted 4. Then going from term 2 to term 3, I again subtracted 4. Then going from 2 to negative 2, I again see that I subtracted negative 4. So great, we have established that this is a linear sequence. Why is it a linear sequence? It is because it has a constant common difference. We can see that between each of these terms, 
to get from term one to term two, from term two to term three, going on, I had to subtract four. So D is equal to negative four. Please be careful and don't say positive four because remember we are subtracting four, we're not adding four. The next step is to find a general term for our sequence. So we need to see if there's a relationship between Tn and n so we can have a general term for the sequence. Please turn your eyes to the board with me again as we find it. So we've already discussed that between each of the terms, we subtracted four. Now I'm going to see if we can find a way to write this as a rule. So we had term one is equal to 10. Then term two was equal to 10 minus four. So essentially this was 10 with one common difference. I'm just writing CD because I don't have enough space on the board. But please remember I'm adding a common difference but I know that this has a negative value. Then for term three, we can say that I had 10 minus four because that's the value of term two, but I then subtracted another four. So that means I had 10 plus two common differences and two common differences in this case, I'm just gonna write it in red for us, would be negative eight. Then if I write an expression for term four, we can see that it was 10 minus four minus four, which is the same as term three, but I'm going to subtract another four, which is going to lead to this negative two value over here. So this would be 10 plus three common differences. Also, just before I conclude about this, I'm sure everyone will agree that the first term over here was just 10. There were no common differences added over here. So I'm hoping that everyone can see the pattern that for term one, I had no common differences. For term two, I had one common difference. Term three, I had two common differences. So each single time, the term value, let's write it as Tn, because we know that that's representative of the term value, was equal to 10 plus n minus one times negative four. What this means is that the value of each term was found by taking 10, which is the value of my first term, and adding one less than the term value times negative four, which is my common difference. So if I wanna simplify this, I'm going to have 10 minus 4n plus 4. So it's going to be equal to 14 minus 4n. Great. So hopefully everyone's with me so far. Just another important indication that we always need to see the relationship between the term value and the common difference as well as the term number. Let's have a look at our next definition. So we are now going to be looking at something called a quadratic pattern. I've already discussed linear patterns, but now we are going to be talking about quadratic patterns. A quadratic pattern is a pattern where the second difference is equal. So now you're probably going to be thinking to yourself, what is the first difference and what is the second difference? And what's the difference and why do I need to know the difference? I want you to please write this down for me. A linear pattern has first differences equal. A quadratic pattern has second differences equal. We're going to look at an example and I'm gonna clearly indicate to you what is a first difference and what is a second difference. Let's have a look at the board. So we are being given an example that's asking us to consider the following pattern that goes one, 
2, 4, 7, 11. And we are going to determine whether it is a quadratic pattern. Just a reminder, a linear pattern, I'm going to say this a few times, everyone, just to make sure everyone understands. The first differences are equal. A quadratic pattern, we have the second differences equal. So, I've put the pattern behind me. We're first going to calculate the first differences of the pattern, and then we're going to calculate what we refer to as a second difference. Let's have a look at the first differences. So, a first difference is essentially the values between the terms of the pattern. So, the first difference between 1 and 2 is positive 1, because I can see that I added 1 from 1 to get to 2. Then to get from 2 to 4, I added 2. Then to get from 4 to 7, I added 3. To get from 7 to 11, I added 4. The numbers that I've written on the board, these are first differences. So, first differences are the differences between the presented values in your pattern. So, if I give you a pattern and you figure out the differences between those term values, that is your first difference. So if your first differences are equal, it is a linear pattern. Now, everyone at home, I'm going to ask you, is the pattern behind me linear? Yes, no, maybe. Are my first differences equal? No, I'm hoping there's some shaking of heads at home. The first differences are not equal. But we're now going to check if it is a quadratic pattern. A quadratic pattern checks whether the differences between the first differences are equal. That may sound a bit like gibberish, but all I'm saying is I want to see what is the difference between the values of my first differences. So let's have a look at them together. If I'm looking at the difference between 1 and 2, I can see that there is a difference of positive 1. If I'm looking between 2 and 3, I can see that there is a difference of positive 1. If I'm looking between 3 and 4, I can see that there is a difference of positive 1. So, the differences between the terms of the first differences is called the second difference. So I'm just going to repeat myself just to make sure we're all on the same page because there is a lot of use of the word difference. If I give you a pattern and you calculate the difference between each of those terms, that is called the first difference. If the first differences are equal, then it is called a linear sequence. If the second differences are equal, and what is the second difference again? I'm hoping you're thinking of a definition. 
The second difference is the differences between the first differences. If the second differences are equal to each other, then it is a quadratic pattern. So behind me, I calculated that the second differences have values of one. Because all of my second differences are equal, do you think I can conclude that it's a quadratic pattern? I'm hoping that you're saying yes. So let's write it behind us. The example behind me is a quadratic pattern because the second differences are equal. So let's conclude on the board. So as the second differences are equal, it is a quadratic pattern. Okay, so I'm going to ask a hypothetical question. If I gave you the pattern 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, is that a quadratic pattern? I'm hoping that you're going to be saying no, because that has a common difference or a common first difference of five. So that means it is not a quadratic pattern. So what I'm going to do with you now is I'm going to look at the concept map with you just to make sure you're happy with what I've covered so far. So we discussed that we have a common difference or a common first difference. That's when we discuss that the difference is equal to Tn minus Tn minus 1. And if that difference is common, it is a linear pattern. So that's when it's like that example that I just said, which is 5, 10, 15, 20 going on. We can calculate a second difference by taking the differences of the first differences. And if it is a common second difference, it is a quadratic pattern. In the next lesson, I'm going to be defining the general term for a quadratic pattern, and we're going to see what calculations we can make using the nth term. Great, so now we've defined first differences, second differences, and after the ad break, we're going to look at some more practical examples of quadratic patterns. See you just now. Welcome back everyone. We're going to be continuing our work with quadratic sequences. In this portion of the lesson, I'm going to talk about the general term of a quadratic sequence, which is also referred to as the nth term of a quadratic sequence. So I'm sure that at this point, you've all been familiar with the quadratic formula or the quadratic form of a parabola but we know that the quadratic general form can extend to patterns as well. Let's have a look at the board. So before we get into the general term, the last thing that I did with you is define a common second difference. We are also going to use the fact that a common second difference is a characteristic of a quadratic pattern in order to define the general term of a quadratic pattern. Let's look at the board together. So as I've just mentioned, the second differences of a quadratic pattern are equal to each other. And the general term of a quadratic sequence can be written as Tn is equal to a n squared plus bn plus c. So this should look quite familiar to you with regards to the quadratic formula, but this is the general form of a quadratic sequence. What I'm going to do with you next 
is we are going to calculate what the first, second, and third term would be. We're also going to calculate what those first differences would be using our quadratic formula. We're also going to calculate what the second differences would be. This does sound like a bit of an effort and quite a lot of work, but what this is going to help me do is find a way that I can always find the values of A, B, and C when I'm trying to determine the general term for a quadratic pattern. So I'm going to ask you to turn your eyes to the screen with me as we determine how we're going to actually find out the values of A, B, and C. Let's have a look at the board. Great, so on this slide you can see that I have written the general form of a quadratic sequence and I'm just going to say it again for everyone. It's Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. So all that's happened over here is that we've written down the values for term 1, term 2, and term 3, as well as term 4. So if I were to substitute n is equal to 1 into this formula, so that means I'm replacing the n's with 1, I would be left with a plus b plus c. If I were to substitute n2 into the formula, I would have a times 2 squared plus 2b plus c. And if I were to substitute n is equal to 3 to find the value of the third term, I would have n squared, which will give me 9, a plus n being 3 substituted in, which will be 3b plus c. And then if I substitute n is equal to 4 into the quadratic form of a quadratic sequence, I'm going to end up with 16a, sorry, 16a plus 4b plus c. So all that I've done in this first line is just replace the n's in this quadratic sequence with n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, and n is equal to 3, and n is equal to 4. Great, so I'm hoping that everyone is still with me so far. So I've listed term 1, term 2, term 3, and term 4. I'm now going to look at the first differences and then I'm going to look at the second differences. Behind me, I hope that you can already see that the second differences are in fact equal to each other, which means that it is a quadratic pattern. Let's go back to the board. So, if I'm looking at the first differences between the first term and the second term, I'm just going to write it down for everyone so you can see the difference would be equal to term 2 minus term 1, which will be equal to 4a plus 2b plus c minus a plus b plus c, which can be simplified to 3a plus b. So we can see that first difference. I don't have time to do all of the algebra with you guys, but I'm hoping that you can see that the first difference between term 3 and term 2 is just term 3 minus term 2. The first difference between term 4 and term 3 is just term 4 minus term 3. Then I'm going to look at the second differences. The second differences end up being 2a and 2a. How did I get to that 2a? Well, here I'm going to take 5a plus b, and I'm going to subtract 3a plus b, and that gives me 2a. Then again, you can do the algebra on this side for me. If you were to do 7a plus b and subtract 5a plus b, you would end up with 2a. So you can see that when we are using the quadratic form of a quadratic sequence, the common differences would be equal to 2a. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize how we could determine a, b, and c using what's on the board behind me. Great, let's go back to the board. We can see, let's go to the next slide, that a 
or we said the 2a was equal to the second difference. Three A plus B was equal to the first term of the first differences, and A plus B plus C was just equal to term one. If you're wondering how I got that, if I go back, you can see that the second differences is equal to two A. Three A plus B is the first term of the first differences and term one is A plus B plus C. Great, so now we're gonna use what's behind me in order to actually do calculations with quadratic sequences, but we'll get straight to that after the break. Welcome back everyone. Before the break, I had just defined how we would find A, B, and C for a quadratic pattern. Now we're gonna look at some examples of quadratic patterns and we are going to find A, B, and C. Let's have a look at our first example. So the question says that we are given the sequence 2, 10, 24, and 44. We have three questions that we're going to work through together. A is asking me to determine the general form of the sequence, and we know the general form is Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C, so we still need to find A, B, and C for that. We're then going to determine the value of the 12th term, then we're going to determine which term will have a value of 290. So we have a pattern and three specific questions about that pattern. Let's go to the board to start working on our general term. So we've got the sequence that goes 2, 10, 24 and 44. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the first differences of the pattern. And just a reminder, the first differences are the differences between the actual term values of the pattern that you are given. So between 2 and 10, we can see that there's a difference of positive 8. Then between 10 and 24, we can see there's a difference of positive 14. Then between 24 and 44, we can see there is a first difference of 20. I'm now going to look at the second differences. I hope that everyone will agree with me. This is not a linear pattern because my first differences are not equal to each other. Looking at the second difference, between 8 and 14, I can see that positive 6 was added. Then between 14 and 20, I can see that positive 6 was added. So my second difference is positive 6. Now I'm going to calculate the general term of the following sequence. We know that we need it to be Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. So if you remember what we did before the break, let me just erase that, that's a bit of a squiggle. Let's go back to the pen. 2a is equal to my second difference. And in this case, my second difference is 6. So if 2a is equal to my second difference of 6, we can see that a will be equal to 3. I then said that 3a plus b is equal to the first term of my first differences. So the first term of my first differences is 8. So 3a plus b will be equal to 8, but I'm going to substitute in a is equal to 3, which I found above, in order to find b. 
And I'm hoping that everyone will agree with me that B is equal to negative 1. Now, last but not least, I need to find C. And A plus B plus C is equal to the first term of the sequence. And in that case, it is equal to 2. So I'm just going to swap color so you can see me substituting in the values. I found that A is 3, so it's going to be 3 plus B, which over here I can see is negative 1, plus C is equal to 2. What's going to happen is I'm going to have that 2 plus C is equal to 2, so actually C is equal to 0. We have found the values of A, B, and C, but I'm not done yet. I need to conclude in the general form of the formula. So let's conclude. The general form for this specific quadratic sequence, please turn to the board with me. It's going to be Tn is equal to 3n squared, because that's my a value, minus n, and I'm not going to have a c value. So normally we have a plus c, but it's just going to be 3n squared minus n as the general form for the sequence, because I do not have c. We're now going to move on to the next example. So behind me, I've repeated that the general form of this quadratic sequence is Tn is equal to 3n squared minus n. And we're going to use that general form in order to help us answer some questions. Let's have a look at B together. So we are given the sequence and we have just determined the general term. This was a part of question A. We are now going to determine the value of the 12th term. Everyone at home, if I'm asking you for the value of the 12th term, does everyone agree that I'm looking for the value of term 12? I'm not looking for which term has a value of 12. I want to know if I were going to zoom in on term 12 of this pattern, what would that value be? Let's look at the board together and we're going to solve it. So, we are going to substitute in n is equal to 12 because I want t12. I want to know what the value of t12 is. So, t12 will be equal to 3 times 12 squared minus 12. So all that I've done is I've substituted in 12 for n. Then if you type that all into your calculator, I'm going to type it in with you. We're going to have 3 times 12 squared minus 12. So we can see that the value of the 12th term is 420. Let's move on to question C. So, now that we've worked out the value of the 12th term, the next question is actually going to give you a value of a term, and you are going to determine which term actually has a value of this, of this specific number. Okay, so, let's see what number we actually have to see the term matches to. So, C asks us to determine which term will have a value of 290. This is not the 290th term. So, it's not the 290th term. I want to know which term number has a value of 290. So, I'm going to substitute in 290 n for tn, because that's the actual value of the term. So it's the actual value, which will be equal to 3n squared minus n. I'm going to carry the 290 over, so it's going to be 3n squared minus n minus 290. And I hope that everyone can see that I've now got a quadratic equation. And if I factorize it, I'm going to have 3n plus 29, n minus 10. So n will be equal to 10, or n will be equal to negative 29 
over 3. But I'm hoping there's some alarm bells going off in your head. Can I have a negative term value? Do I ever ask you to find the negative 29th term of a pattern? Or even a fraction, do I ask you, please find the negative half term of a pattern? No, we want natural numbers. So behind me, I'm going to say that the natural number of 10 indicates the value of the pattern. So this specific pattern, where this pattern has a value of 290, it is the 10th term. So let's write that down. I know that n cannot be equal to negative 29 over 3. So n is equal to 10. So the 10th term will have a value of 290. Let's go to the next example, everybody. So we are now moving on to an example with the Olympics. So in the first stage of the soccer at the Olympic Games, there are teams from four different countries in each group. Each country in the group must play every other team in the group once. So I'm hoping that everyone's getting a bit excited because we're now putting sport into maths. I'm sure some of you thought that could never happen. But now we are imagining that we're at the Olympic Games. There's one group with four countries. Each of them are going to play each other once. We're then going to have a look at what would happen if there were five groups and six groups or six teams in a group rather and five teams in a group. And we're going to see how many matches would be played. So let's have a look at the actual questions for this example. So how many matches will be played in each group in the first stage of the event? So that's essentially where we have four teams. Then we're going to see how many matches would be played if there are five teams in each group. Then see how many matches would be played if there are six teams in each group. Then we are going to determine the general formula of the sequence. So first things first, we have four teams in one group. We're now going to see how many matches would be played. So let's look at the grid together and we're going to work it out to see how many games are going to be played with four teams in one group. Great, so if I'm looking at team A, team A would have to play team B. They would also have to play team C and they would also have to play team D. Team B would then have to play team C and team D because B is already played A, that's why I haven't written it again. Team C would then have to play Team D. So over here, we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six matches. If there are four teams. The reason why I haven't put any teams in over here for D is because they've already played every one. That's question A. Question, we've already filled that in. Sorry, that's a repeat of the slide. For question B, we're going to see how many matches would be played if there are five teams. We can see that team A will play B, C, D, E, going on and on and on until you see that the last game is between D and E, which means that there are 10 games. Then if there were six teams playing, if you were to write down all the possible combinations of games being played, we can see that there were 15 matches played. So guys, I hope that you can see that all that's been happening on the grids behind me is matching teams together and seeing how many games would have been played. We're now going to look at the amount of matches for four teams, five teams, and six teams to see if we can determine the pattern. So we can see that we had six games for four teams, 10 games for five teams, 15 games for six teams and it's going to go on and on and on. So let's analyze the pattern. So it's going to be 6, 10, 15 going on 
I'm going to fill in the 21 over here. The first differences between these two is 4. First differences between those two is 5. First differences between 15 and 21 is 6. The second difference is equal to 1. So let's determine the general form of the sequence. So again, we've got 4, 5, and 6, determining the first differences. Second difference is a value of 1. To determine the general form, we know that we have to say that 2a is equal to the second difference, which is equal to 1. So a will be equal to a half. Then we say 3a plus b will be equal to the first term of the first differences, which is 4. So I'm going to have 3 times a half plus b is equal to 4. So I'm going to have 3 over 2 plus b is equal to 4. If I multiply everything by 2, I'm going to have that 3 plus 2b is equal to 8. So b will be equal to 5 over 2. Then last but not least, a, let's, sorry, let me just erase that. And lastly, a plus b plus c is equal to the first term of the entire sequence, which we can see in this case is 6. So I'm going to have a half plus 5 over 2 plus c is equal to 6, which means I'm going to have 3 plus c is equal to 6. So c is equal to 3. Let's just conclude the general form for this quadratic sequence will be a half n squared plus 5 over 2n plus 3. Great. Thank you so much for joining me for quadratic patterns today. I hope that the rest of your day goes very well.